guys, welcome back to the Musicians Do It Better program. If you don't know me already, my name is Ahana Banerjee and I'm going to be a rising senior this year. I'm doing this project for my Girl Scout Gold Award to educate younger students on the different types of instruments, their functions, how they sound, and how to play them. And this is to help you guys make educated decisions um, for when you're deciding to either play in the band or the school orchestra or maybe even sing in the choir. So um, yeah, hopefully this you know can help guide you to the correct direction just because I know there are so many instruments and it's really hard to find one that you find suitable or something that you love without really knowing any background information. So yeah, that's the overall goal or, or purpose of this project. So um, yeah, um, moving on, I do want to say that this is actually going to be the, my last YouTube video recording and um, I'm so sad <laughs> because it's it's been so much fun, you know, communicating with you guys, doing live streams and YouTube videos, um, teaching you guys about the different instruments, and I, I'm really sad, but I'm going to try summarizing everything that we've learned in this YouTube recording so far, just to give you guys a big old summary or a, a whole review of everything that we've learned and um, I'll also give you guys some trivia questions give you some time to answer them just so um, you know we can come to a clear understanding about you know how instruments actually work and everything so um, yeah that is what we're going to be doing today and we're going to be starting with percussion then going into wind instruments specifically clarinet and flute um, we're still going into voice so singing and then we're going to end it with piano ukulele and guitar and throughout this video we're also going to be playing some instruments for you guys just so you guys can you know hear them again listen to them so by the end of this video you you feel like you can confidently say that you know the different types of instruments and and how they work so um yeah that's the plan for this last video um also hopefully you guys had a lot of fun watching my other youtube recordings and um i hope that it educated you guys a little bit more on the different types of instruments because you know it is so hard to like understand them or like uh, understand how they look like and how they sound like it's um it's going to be a little bit difficult to pick which one you like so yeah i hope that this you know will help you and um yeah let's get right into it we're going to be starting with percussion hi guys so i'm back with sand blocks and um, this is a type of percussion instrument that you can use and essentially how you play them is that you rub them against each other in a rhythmic form just to make some um, noises. It has a really peculiar sound so uh, hopefully you can hear it through the camera. Uh, I'll play it right now. And yeah, um, essentially you guys can make this at home. You'll just take some sandpaper, maybe uh, staple it or tape it around a wooden block so that you can play it and rub it against each other. And they're really easy to make. Um, I also showed some of these um, instruments and these, including these sand blocks in my first percussion video. So if you wanna check that out, you know, feel free. Um, next, we're actually going to be checking out the tambourine, and so I'll play these for you guys. They're actually made up of tiny little cymbals, so when I shake it, you can hear um, the cymbals like clashing against each other, and it'll be like really nice to like hear a rhythmic form. So essentially how I would play was it is put my finger through this hole and tap it with my left hand just um, to like give it some more rhythm and preciseness. So that's how it sounds like, uh, more or less. So yeah, this is the tambourine. Um, you usually play this in the percussion or in a band. Um, it, it gives it much more like volume. So like if you were to play like Jingle Bell Rock or like some kind of Christmas song, the tambourine would be perfect for that. So um, yeah. That is the tambourine, and moving on, we're actually going to be checking out the cymbal. And um, you can play the cymbal in many ways. Um, you can use a lot of different mallets for the cymbal as well. I have one covered in yarn, and I have one with a wooden tip. 
they both have truly different sounds. Um, the um, yarn mallet has much more of a wide sound, whereas the wooden mallet has a much more loud and crash cymbal-like sound. So it sounds, it's a little bit more painful to the ears, but it definitely has a lot of weight when you're playing it with a band, and it's very powerful. Whereas this one um, with the yarn tip is just a little bit more wide, uh, it's very like broad, it can project better. So um, yeah, I'll show you guys how um, different they sound by playing the cymbal, so hopefully you can hear it. And to stop it from vibrating, you're just going to hold it, um, hold the cymbal at the edge. And uh, sometimes your band director or conductor will ask you to let it vibrate just for more emphasis. So for the yarn mallet, I'll let it vibrate. So hopefully you can hear like the, the vibration and the loud echoey sound. So. So yeah. Those are the two different types of mallets. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but the yarn tip definitely has a much more broader, wider ranged sound. So um, yeah, they're both totally different um, noises, but you know, the cymbal can be played in many different ways. You can even have a rubber tip and it'll sound way different than any of these two mallets. So uh, yeah. Those are just some of the several ways to play the cymbal, and this also works with a lot of other instruments, say a xylophone. If you play it with a yarn tip versus a wooden tip, it's going to sound very different. And so mallets are actually a very important concept, I guess, in percussion instruments. So um, yeah, uh, moving on uh, to the last instrument I'm going to show you guys. Um, it's the shaker and a shaker is actually very common it's very easy to make in my first video I actually made a DIY shaker and show you guys how to make one so um, you know if you want to learn you can go check out that video and um, shakers are essentially you know the name kind of says it all if you shake it it'll make sound um, maracas are a type of shaker but um, Shakers are typically more cylindrical. They look like this and you'll play them like this. So um, horizontally and if I wanted to play it rhythmically, it would go like So something like that usually they won't ask you to play a shaker rhythmically just because it's not meant for that But I mean, I guess you can also play it like this Many people don't though because it actually sounds um, kind of weird or odd, out of place, sort of. So you'll usually just play like this, which is nice too. So um, yeah, those are the different types of instruments I wanted to go over. And I'm going to give you guys three questions for percussion trivia. Um, I'll give you four answer choices for all of them. and. Let's see if y'all can answer them. So uh, I'll be back with some questions. Hi guys, so we're going to be moving into trivia now. And I haven't covered all the material in this video itself. So most of the questions are actually going to be from the previous live stream and the first YouTube video that I've made. But don't worry, in case you get it wrong, I will be explaining the answer at the end of um, and while I reveal it, so um, if you don't understand a concept or why it's right, I will be explaining it, so don't worry. And um, yeah, so let's get into it. For the first question, I'll ask, um, which of the following is a type of unpitched percussion? So the answer choices for this one are A, timpani, B, tambourine, C, chimes, or D, marimba. I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. So the correct answer is actually B, tambourine. And the reason why the tambourine is a type of unpitched percussion is because I can't make different sounds or different noises with the tambourine. I can't change my pitch. I can't change a note. Um, the only thing I can play is 
the tambourine itself. Like I can't change anything about it. So um, if you see this, I can only make this one note. There's no way to make any other sounds or any other pitches with this tambourine. Um, however, for the other instruments, timpani, chimes, and marimba, I have mallets and I have different notes that I can play. So um, I will have notes like letter notes, like A, B, C, D, um, and etc. So I can change my pitch and change the notes and it's different from the tambourine because for the tambourine I can't play any other notes. There is no other way to do that. So um, yeah, that's it for the first question. So for the second question, I'm going to be asking a, a sort of easier one, but uh, yeah, let's get into it. Which of the following is not a part of the percussion family? Is not a part of the percussion family. So the answer choices are a, viola, B, xylophone, C, piano, or D, the gong. So the correct answer is actually A, the viola. The viola is not a percussion instrument, and this is because it's actually classified as a string instrument. Many people play the viola in string orchestras, um, whereas percussion instruments are typically played in bands. So you'll never see really a viola being played with a band instrument, so um, it's just not really common in school bands so or school orchestras. So um, that's essentially it. The reason why the viola is considered a string instrument is because actually it, it's made of strings. It has four strings and you play them with a bow. And um, essentially the definition of a percussion instrument is something you hit or strike to make noise. And you're not really hitting or striking the viola. However, say for a piano, you're, you're hitting the notes, you're pressing on them. So it is considered a percussion instrument. Okay, so for the last and final question for percussion is um, which of the following is a mallet that you don't use in playing percussion instruments? So something that you don't use um, as a material for, for mallets. And um, the answer choices are A, yarn, B, rubber, C, steel, or D, wooden. Okay, so the correct answer is C, steel. No percussionist, at least that I've seen, has ever used a steel mallet to play a percussion instrument. And there are reasons for that. The reason is because steel is so hard and um, metallic that if you play it using like, if you play it with the cymbal, it'll just be so loud and it'll hurt your ears it'll sound really excruciatingly painful so it's not really recommended to play with a steel mallet also you have that risk of maybe damaging your instruments um, with a yarn rubber or wooden mallet it, there isn't really a risk because as long as you uh, don't overdo it you're not going to break your instrument however steel is a really strong uh, material so there's always that risk of uh, denting your cymbal or denting a drum or something. So uh, yeah, not recommended to use a steel mallet for percussion instruments. So those were the three trivia questions and um, we're actually going to be now moving on to woodwind instruments. So we're going to mainly be talking about flute and clarinet, but woodwind instruments also include the saxophones, oboe, piccolo, um, English horn. So we're um, only going to be talking mainly about the flute and clarinet just because I have those instruments available with me, but it extends to uh, countless other instruments. So um, yeah, we will get into that right now. Hi guys, so I'm back with my clarinet and we're actually going to be talking about reeds. So um, what reeds are are basically a wooden like sheet which you play your instrument with. So I'll put my reed on my mouthpiece, which is right up here, and I'll try putting my 
mouth across my mouthpiece or around my mouthpiece so that I'm hitting the reed with my mouth. And this is essentially how you make a sound with your clarinet or your uh, saxophone, uh, etc. And um, this is to help your sound vibrate and you can actually get a sound out. So without a reed, you can't really play an instrument. So all um, clarinetists or saxophone players, oboists, um, they all have to purchase reeds or make their own. And um, without that, you can't even play your instrument. So it's, it's crucial that you understand how reeds work. So um, yeah. And um, moving on, the, there's actually single reed instruments and double reed instruments. So this is a little tricky to understand, but single reed instruments are easier to play. And the single reed instruments include clarinet and saxophone, whereas double reed instruments include oboe and English horn. Double reed instruments are very hard to learn. Um, it also includes the bassoon. And um, this is just because it takes a lot of energy to play them. It's a lot more harder to take care of your reeds and you and you require a lot of oxygen just to play them. So in comparison, single reed uh, instruments are a little bit easier. So um, yeah, that's essentially the overview of it. But um, also, flute is the only woodwind instrument that doesn't require any reed to be played with. So you can actually play the flute without even needing a reed. You can even share the flute, even though it's a little bit unhygienic, you can share your flute with others and, um, you know, play it. And so uh, you can't really do that with a clarinet because you'd be putting your mouth on the same reed and that gets a little icky <laughs> if you're trying to share that. So um, yeah, would not, de definitely would not recommend. So uh, yeah, these are the two different types of reed instruments but um, overall, there are six um, woodwind instruments, and this includes flute, clarinet, saxophone, piccolo, uh, oboe, English horn, bassoon. Um, so yeah, also the piccolo is just a smaller and higher pitched version of the flute, so I would... Uh, recommend that you try that out or look into it. A lot of flutists also play the piccolo. It's just a miniature version. So, um, you yeah, know, that's pretty cool. And I'm actually going to play a small little piece um, from Moana just so uh, you guys can hear really how the clarinet sounds like. And my sister will uh, also come over and play her flute just so you guys can hear um, a little bit about what it sounds like and just hear it in a um, musical setting. So uh, we'll be right back. Hi guys, so I'm back and I'll be playing a few lines from the Moana soundtrack. Um, it's from How Far I'll Go. It's not too much, but I hope you enjoy. sister is going to be playing a piece on her flute it's not for Moana or anything but it is something that she's been working on so uh, I'll give it to her
sister. Um, hopefully you guys like that, and maybe this gives you a better idea of how like a clarinet sounds versus a flute. Um, we aren't actually going to be doing trivia questions for this section, just because we've already done a lot on the woodwind section already, and um, we're actually just going to move on right away to the voice section, which we are going to do trivia questions on, so we just hang in there. And um, yeah, so hopefully this woodwind section helps give you a, a broader overview of um, the difference in sound, basically um, what reeds are, because they're definitely very crucial if you want to play anything um, woodwind instrument related, uh, of course besides the flute, um, because they don't use you any reeds, but um, yeah, uh, hopefully you enjoyed, and we'll move right along to voice, so thank you. Hi guys, so yeah, now we're in the voice part of the YouTube video, and we're going to be talking about ranges. So there are six different voice types. Um, the higher pitched ones are normally for girls, while the lower pitched ones are normally for guys, just because as you get older, girls generally have a higher pitched voice, so they have a, a better higher range, whereas guys generally have a lower pitched voice, so they have a better lower range. So um, that's usually what they're generally good at. So um, yeah, um, so the uh, basically the highest pitched um, voice type is soprano, then it goes down to mezzo-soprano, down to alto, down to tenor, baritone, and bass. So um, if you can tell, basically the top three are for women. So soprano, mezzo-soprano, alto, and then the bottom three are most commonly for men, tenor, baritone, and bass. So um, that is basically how it works. Um, usually in choirs, you're going to be assigned one or the other. Usually in opera singing, uh, people are known for being, you know, oh my god, best soprano, you know, or um, best bass, best baritone. So um, singers are uh, usually uh, identified by their voice range, but um, it's a really common thing, and if you want to figure out what your voice range is, you just sing your highest pitched note and your lowest pitched note, and uh, try matching them up with a tuner to tell you what note you're singing, and um, figure out from there um, what your range mainly is. So uh, you can uh, search it up online or on Google and see what um, range covers which notes, so you can um, you know, determine which range you are. So, uh, yeah, that's a fun exercise that you can do whenever you're bored or anything. So, uh, yeah, I recommend that. And we also went over solmization, and I know that's a huge word, but it's basically a scale. It's basically giving a specific symbol to each note in any scale. So, this is actually uh, known as do re mi. So, the entire scale would be do re mi fa so la ti do do ti la so fa me re do that's going up the scale and down the scale so you have um you have that to listen to you know um basically each of the notes represents a different or each syllable represents a different note that's why the lowest note is do and it also ends on the highest note do to represent an octave um, an octave is a group of eight different notes, and you're basically singing each one of them. And um, it, you'll end on the same note that you start on, just an octave higher. So, do, do. It's the same note, you're just singing it higher. So that's why it starts and ends on do. And um, speaking of scales, there are two main different types, major and minor scales. Majors typically sound happier, they have an, uh, a really nice positive connotation, and um, uh, whereas for, I guess, minor scales, they're very negative, pessimistic, they sound a little angry, sad, or mysterious. It's uh, basically their opposites, and um, in music or in pieces while you're playing, your instructor will either ask you to um, play a major or minor scale to warm up your instrument or um, anything like that. And for uh, in pieces, con uh, composers, while writing their pieces, they'll 
add in a mixes of major and minor scales just to make the sound or the music have more uh, dimension to it, more feelings in involved. So um, that's kind of the way to go when you're composing. You're, you're trying to use as many like different um, types of moods as you can just to alter it a little bit, you know? And um, yeah, that's it for major and minor skills. Um, you can also sing them. It's a little bit harder to sing minor skills, but um, minor skills are just generally harder than major skills. Major skills are more commonly known. So uh, yeah, that's it for that. And for um, singing, there's also different ways that your voice can actually translate um, thoughts and feelings like you don't have to just sing words you can beatbox you can do opera you can do acapella singing um you can also do like scatting so each one has its own different vibe scatting is um when the rhythms and notes can be changed every time you sing and you're just singing in like uh syllables i guess so it's like so something like that it's just a lot of like nonsense being put into a jazzy rhythm so um yeah it's it's very like it's for improvising when you're improvising for the melody so um it's not not too common these days but it used to be very very common in like the 1900s jazz vocal stylings were so um you know appreciative back then and then we also have acapella where you can sing in a group or sing as a solo singer and you sing without any instruments so for some acapella groups i would recommend checking out maybe pentatonics they sing really well together um it's a group of five people and they all try mimicking their um voices as like drums different types of beats um one person may be the bass while the other person is the harmony and another person is the melody and they all try to interact with each other and harmonize with each other so it's really nice to listen to and um it shows you that you don't always need instruments to make music you can have your own voice and make it uh, like that and obviously opera singing is just singing in different languages it's a form of theater where singing is just a very a, a very plays just a really leading role in in the theater and into the uh play i guess so um it's it can be very moving at times it's really emotional and um very poetic so it, even if i didn't know the language i could almost be moved to tears so that's how powerful opera is and obviously beatboxing is just imitating the sound of a drum machine with your voice uh, unfortunately, I can't do it. I don't have the skills to do that, but you're basically um, trying to lay down a beat with just your voice, which is really, really nice. And um, it just sounds really, really cool when you're trying to um, mimic so many drums at the same time, right? So uh, yeah, that is a very uh, <laughs> intense crash course, I guess you can say, of what voice instrument is. Sorry if... Um, I'm going a little bit too fast, but if you want any more in-depth depth information, I do have videos of each one of these, and I've done some live streams on them as well. So if you had checked them out, or if you want to look at my YouTube videos, you know, uh, feel free. It's um, it definitely goes much more slower, and you'll understand all of them a lot better. I'm trying to breeze as fast as possible for these ones, just so I can. Um, keep this video uh, very brief and just a, a strong overview in case you did watch all of those and you wanted to just have a summary um, then this video is for you but if you haven't watched those videos I strongly recommend that you do and then come back to this one to have more in-depth um, understanding of everything so uh, yeah we're going to quickly move on to the checkpoint or the trivia questions. So I will come back once I have those written down. Okay, so I'm back and I do have some fun trivia questions to ask you guys. Um, so here, I'll start. This is a fill in the blank question. 
and I will give you four answer choices. So uh, this is Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, blank, Do. So I want you guys to fill in the blank and I'll say the question again because I know it's a little bit confusing, but um, just fill in the blank syllable for this scale. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Do. So the blank was the part that I did not sing, obviously. And here are your choices. A, T, B, To, C, Ra, or D, Re. Okay, so the correct answer is actually T, A. So um, this is just how the scale works. There isn't really an explanation for it. If you're having trouble really um, internalizing the scale or solmization, I recommend watching um, A Sound of Music or watching just clips of it. They have um, a singing song that you can sing to memorize um, the Do, Re, Mi scale. It's like Do, a deer, a female deer, Ray, a drop of golden sun. You know, that song is just really helpful so you can help memorize this without making it seem like busy work because it is important that you memorize this just so uh, you can have future reference for all the different types of, you know, notes. And it'll just help you whenever you're playing an instrument to see, you know, what is really like going on, right? It'll give you more perspective. So I do recommend memorizing it, but I don't want it to seem like work. It's It should just come naturally um, when you, if you watch that music video from The Sound of Music. And uh, yeah, I strongly recommend that. So um, yeah, so to the next question. For the second question, um, it is, how many different voice types are there? A, three, B, four, C, five, or D, six? Okay, so there are actually six different voice types. I didn't necessarily have an explanation for this, but it's just because they're split in the middle between female and male. So um, if the female voice can sing in three different voice types, you know, one will be the highest, one will be the lowest, and one will obviously be the middle. And they have that for males as well. So, you know, three plus three is equal to six. So um, maybe that can help you memorize it just a little bit more. Um, I know it can be tricky to really, I guess, memorize all of these things when I'm hitting you guys all at once. But remember, again, this is just a crash course. It's not really... Um, too much of in-depth anything so um, I'm just trying to say as much information as I can just to fully summarize everything that we've learned throughout this course and um, for the last question it actually goes hand in hand with the question I said before which of the following is a female voice type a soprano b tenor c baritone or four bass So the answer is a soprano. The three different uh, female voice types are soprano, mezzo-soprano, and alto, and three different vo uh, male voice types are tenor, baritone, and bass. So um, an easy way you can remember this is hopefully you can uh, remember like the, the different types of voice types, and just remember that the three highest ones are for female and the three lowest ones are for male. Again, the progression from highest to lowest is soprano, mezzo-soprano, alto, tenor, baritone, bass. So um, yeah, hopefully you can remember that. Um, honestly, if you're going into choir, this is a little bit important if you are interested in singing and stuff. So I do recommend that you like try to figure out what type of range your voice is because when you're going into choir you want to see how your voice actually fits in with the rest of the choir so you want to you know understand what position you're in see if you're playing if you're better at bass you're not going to sing really high notes right so um it's really important to know where you stand 
So, um, yeah, those were the three uh, trivia questions I had for this unit. And we're finally moving on to the last unit, which is the piano and the lute family, which I will be going into right now. So, um, yeah, stay tuned. Hey guys, so I'm back with a ukulele and a guitar. So, um, what I wanted to do today was actually for um, the lute family especially, I just wanted to uh, clear up some misunderstandings. So essentially, you can play the ukulele um, with chords. So what you do for chords is just um, maybe like press a certain string or in between frets. So these lines are called frets. And um, try to just like strum it. So if you strum it, you know, that is also considered a chord because it's three notes or more being played at the same time. So um, what usually happens when people play the ukulele is that they'll try to sing over it just for the ukulele to provide some background support, but it's not really considered a main instrument. Like you're not going to play the ukulele by itself typically. You usually just play it um, and then sing over it or um, do something, uh, to elevate it a little bit more just because uh, the ukulele is a Hawaiian instrument and you it's very like soft sounding so you want to to just upgrade it by singing over it or maybe adding some more instruments just because the ukulele can't really stand its own ground by itself but it's still such a great instrument so I do recommend playing it. it's very cute and very you know um, convenient because it's small you can travel with it and it's adorable so um yeah that's for the ukulele and for the um guitar the guitar actually has six strings whereas the ukulele has four and the guitar you can do the same thing you'll be strumming it and it'll actually have more um, of a louder sound because the strings are heavier they're made up of um either like metal sometimes or just a very like hard type of string whereas the um ukulele is made up of nylon and it's kind of plasticky so it's not really a loud sound it doesn't really give too much depth but it's still i mean beautiful no <laughs> nevertheless right or nonetheless so um yeah that's the main difference you can usually have like bits of metal put into the strings for a guitar but that's usually never the case for ukulele and also um, we're going to be talking a little bit about t tuning pegs. So tuning pegs are these things right here And what you do is once you twist them the tune will either go uh, pitch up or pitch down so um, twisting it left or right will either make it sharper or flatter and this is so you can uh, really like customize your own instrument if you want to have a little deeper sound maybe have a little bit of Spanish flavor or um, in your in your um, guitar then you can tune down a little bit just to give it um, a more unique taste but um, if you wanted a little bit more country I would say tune it up just a little bit so it can give a little bit more of a country sort of flavor to it so um, in that retrospect like the guitar and the ukulele are very like um, flexible instruments like you can totally customize it in any way you want to and it'll be all good to go so um, also going back to what chords are you can also uh, play chords on the piano and you can just play three notes at the same time and your right hand will be playing the treble clef while your left hand will be playing the bass clef and piano is one of those instruments that only plays, um, that is the only instrument that plays both treble and bass clef. Usually all instruments, as far as I know, only play one or the other. So, um, for instance, the clarinet and flute only play in treble clef. However, the tuba, euphonium, trombone, they play in bass clef. Um, the viola is actually one of the main instruments that plays an alto clef, which we haven't really gotten into too much, but we will get into that in the next live stream. So um, if you want to learn more about alto clef, then, you know, uh, feel free to join. But yeah, um, 
piano is just a little bit tricky to learn just because you're trying to play so many different notes on two different hands and there's just a lot of thinking involved but i do recommend playing it if you are interested in music and if you want to learn something before you actually uh, going into your instrument so for for example, my sister, she actually started off with piano at first, but then transitioned into the flute just because um, it was much more convenient to learn the piano before so she could familiar herself with the different types of rhythms, different types of notes. She would be used to the treble clef. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just an easier transition. So I do recommend playing the piano at first. And uh, yeah, so now we're actually going to go into more of the uh, trivia questions. So I'm going to start off a little bit easy, but um, if you don't know the answers, don't worry, I'll definitely go over them. So um, yeah, let's start off. So this is a ukulele, but uh, it's a basically fill-in-the-blank question and I wanted you guys to tell me if you knew what these lines are called these horizontal lines on the neck of the um, Ukulele, so um, These are the options a frets B lines C board four or D bridge So the correct answer is actually a frets. Um, these are called frets, and I know I've briefly gone o gone over them, but it's essentially where you place your fingers just to make a different sound. You can make different chords with frets. So I'll try to show you guys. So if I put my finger here, that's the sound it makes. If I put my finger here instead, it'll make this type of sound. And here, if I just have open string, no, no hands. So yeah, that's like what it sounds like. Uh, basically, it's just chords, different types of chords, and depending on where you put your hands, it'll make a different, or not hands, where you put your fingers, it'll make a different type of sound. And you use these frets to sort of guide you through the process. So um, yeah, that's essentially what it is. And um, another question that I have for the second one is, what is one difference between the guitar and the ukulele? So A, the guitar is smaller. B, the ukulele is smaller. C, the ukulele has six strings, or D, a guitar has four strings. So the correct answer is actually B, a ukulele is smaller. So um, here, I'll grab my guitar just so I can clearly show you the differences and hopefully you can easily visualize them. This is my guitar and this is my ukulele. So as you can see, the guitar barely fits into the frame. It actually really doesn't. And this is where the ukulele is. So um, obviously the ukulele is definitely way smaller than the guitar. Um, they're almost incomparable in size. This is so big. So um, that's uh, obviously the ukulele is smaller and the guitar is way bigger than the ukulele. And um, I'm not sure if you can see, but here you can see that there are only four strings for the ukulele. And here for the guitar, let me see if I can make it as close up as I can. There are six strings for the guitar, which is many more than the ukulele. So um, again, the correct answer is that a ukulele is smaller. And for the last question, I'll try making it a little bit easier. Um, which instrument is a part of the lute family? So A, the violin, B, the viola, C, the banjo, or D, the piano. So the correct answer is actually C, the banjo. 
Um, we haven't actually gone over the banjo yet, and I don't really have a banjo at home, unfortunately, so I can't show you guys. But the reason why the rest are not part of the lute family is because the violin and viola are part of the strings family for orchestra, and the piano is, again, a percussion instrument. So uh, because of the process of elimination, banjo ultimately is a uh, part of the lute family, but also... Um, the only instruments that are actually commonly that are commonly used which are part of the loop family are only guitar ukulele and banjo so um those are actually the main three types so it's not too bad if you don't really uh you know understand the dynamic of the lute family if you just know that there's three instruments in there and know like the basics of all three instruments then you should be fine and um yeah that actually terminates or concludes, I guess, the uh, big old crash course that I'm trying to do. So um, hopefully I did not go too fast for you guys. And if I did, my apologies, but you can also look through my other YouTube videos to get a more in-depth explanation. Or um, we're actually having a review day slash string day instrument um, for my next live stream. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask and I'll probably be able to answer them um, during the live stream and it will be on Tuesday. So yeah, um, that is actually it for our last YouTube video. Thank you so much for joining me and and participating and watching my videos i'm so grateful i couldn't have done it without y you guys and um yeah i'm just really really happy hopefully this was a good explanation roughly of all of the instruments i know i did really go pretty pretty fast so um again any questions concerns you can just uh drop in during the live stream and ask me and i'll be happy to answer them so um again thank you so much and this is finally our uh last um video unfortunately <laughs> so um yeah i guess i will either see you guys um on my live stream or uh you know uh you can still watch my videos over and over again if you want or you know <laughs> it's okay um either one works so yeah it was great teaching you guys i it was an honor so um thank you for that so yeah i'll uh see you guys soon i guess <laughs> if i can so um yeah goodbye thank you again